quantidade de profissionais relacionados com o sono que são os treinadores do sono. Vamos falar com o Nick Littlehales, ele é treinador de sonhos e eu há anos que trabalha com desportistas de elite de várias modalidades. Ele é o treinador de sono de Cristiano Ronaldo. Foi sleep couch de grandes equipas de futebol como o Manchester United e o Real Madrid. Em entrevista à RTP via Skype, disse que é um erro querermos dormir 8 horas seguidas. Ele diz mesmo que nunca encontrou ninguém que com consistência conseguisse estar as 8 horas seguidas a dormir. Destaca a importância das cestas e diz que é fundamental nas rotinas manter ou escolher uma hora fixa para acordar. Portugal, you are known as the man who taught Cristiano Ronaldo how to sleep. I'm not going to ask you if he's a great sleeper, even because we all know he's a perfectionist, but I want to know how important is recovery to a player or an elite sportsman? Um, it's always been extremely important, um, and never more so in the modern world, in particular in sport, but just everyday life. You know, we've adopted technology, we are living in a 24-7 world, Uh, we have multiple schedules, more demands, they're not going to stop. It's how to take advantage of them, but how to protect yourself from those impacts. And human recovery is just a natural recovery process that we should learn a lot more about because we just don't educate from schooling to universities, from parents. So we've got a lot to learn, but we can do something about it. In your books you refer to the myth uh, of eight hours sleep in a row. Why it is a myth? Um, I think, you know, throughout uh, my years of experience in the industry and, and two decades in sport, um, I've never met anybody who can really achieve eight hours in one block undisturbed, three, six, five a year. Uh, like I say, with all of our occupations and schedules and how humans sleep all over our planet, um, I think it's, there's no argument about you need around eight hours of recovery in every 24, but it's actually not natural the human being to do it all in one block at night. Uh, so it's not that long ago, uh, before the electric light bulb was created, that we as humans all we slept in what's called a multiphasic, polyphasic way. That was maybe twice a day, three times a day, or even lots of short periods. So I think that's why it's a bit of a myth, because most of us don't adopt it or can adopt it. So we just need to maybe adopt an approach that we, we used to use. I suppose in sports world it's easier to nap. Is it possible to everybody to have a polyphasic sleep or to change our habits um, with the schedules, the work schedules we have? Oh, I think so. It's you know the word, you know the word sleep always means something that's taken for granted and not a performance criteria. Well, you know we've redefined that in sports and it can apply to everybody. I think the, the napping thing, it normally means snoozers for losers and, you know, you, you, you're not doing things right, but I, I think success equals your ability to recover in shorter periods more often, so uh, a nap is just a vacant mind space at the right time of day, 30 minutes or less, a little bit of visualization, you can do it absolutely anywhere, you don't have to try and force it, um, and most of us in our 24 hour process, we, we do waste a lot of time, we talk too much, we do things that could happen quicker, um, there's lots of opportunity to create these little breaks and once you start doing it you realise that you're more productive, you're happier, your mood, your motivation, your, everything about you is so much better if you do it, so napping or as we call them controlled recovery periods that will make mind spaces are the key to human success. It's important to have patterns and uh, routines. It is more important to have a constant wake time or a constant go to bed time. I think the most important one from my experience is the consistent wake time. Uh, as we used to sleep outside and spend all our time outside as human beings, we would be triggered as our start of the day would be the sun rising and bringing a level of light into our brains that would trigger us to be active right through to midday and then towards diminished light as the sun sets in the early evening. Now that particular process, if you have a consistent wait time, uh, what we do is chop the day up into 90 minute cycles because that's a way of measuring sleep in a clinical environment. So we start with a consistent wait time, 
we chop your day up into 90 minute cycles and that creates all these little timings. And then you can think about when you're getting four cycles or five cycles, which is 7.5 hours at night, or four cycles of six hours. And it tries to, so you've got optimal sleep target times based on that, but it's always about the consistent wake time. Can you give us some practical advices for a good sleep? Uh, for example, um, what is the best position? Uh, from my opinion, just looking back to human behavior, it is on the opposite side to a dominant side in a fetal position. So everybody knows the sort of fetal position, sort of curled up, knees bent, arms gently folded. On the opposite side to your dominant side, because the brain likes to think when it's taking you into the deep sleep stages that you are, although vulnerable, you can protect yourself. So heart and genitals, your dominant side is there to protect you. So we always try to encourage that uh, we, we take on that position, but the key to it is what's underneath you when it releases to allow you to sleep in that position. Oh.